Hi, everyone. It's great to see you here. Um, it is lovely and sunny here in Connecticut. I am Martha Seelman. I am the Executive Director of Studio Art Quilt Associates. We are one of the four organi organizations who put on Textile Talks along with Surface Design Association, the Quilt Alliance, and the International Quilt Museum. Um, Studio Art Quilt Associates, S-A-Q-A or SACWA, is a membership organization with almost 4,500 members living in countries around the world. We put on conferences, we put out a quarterly journal. We have all sorts of educational events for our members from a seminar to various webinars to online communities and special interest groups. We'd love to have you join us if you're not already a member. Um, in, and if you are interested, we are offering a discount off of regular membership dues. Just use the code TALKS, T-A-L-K-S, to get a discount off of membership. And you will be invited to attend our upcoming virtual mini conference called Art in Place that will be happening July 14th and 15th, and will be featuring artists from all over the world talking about how where they live influences the art that they make. So I hope that you will join SACWA and be able to attend our upcoming Art in Place conference. For today's textile talk, I am really thrilled that we are going to be bringing you Melinda Watt from the Chicago Institute of Art or Art Institute of Chicago. I always get it backwards, the Art Institute of Chicago. And she's going to be talking to you about the exhibition that just opened of Geo Swaby's wonderful textile work. Melinda is the chair and Krista C. Mayer Thurman, curator of the textile department of the Art Institute of Chicago. She's been in that role since 2018. She oversees their global textile collection and leads the textile installation program, both within their department and throughout the museum. Uh, recently, two of the exhibitions that she's really proud of include Morris and Company, The Business of Beauty, fabric, Fabricating Fashion, and now Gio Swaby, Fresh Up. She's also a board member of the Textile Society of America and the Central, um, I'm going to mess up my French, the Centre International d'Etudes des Textiles Anciens. Uh, previously, she was the curator in the Department of European Sculpture and Decorative Arts at the Metropolitan Museum in New York and the supervising curator of the Antonio Rowdy Textile Center. She's also written several books and um, has been guest curator for several wonderful exhibitions. I wanted to just um, let everybody know that some people were hoping to actually have Gio Swaby be with us today. And unfortunately she is currently traveling because she's going back to New York um, to install an exhibition at the Claire Oliver Gallery in New York. And, um, I know that it's always fun to hear directly from the artists, but I'm really looking forward to today's presentation because sometimes hearing from a curator or hearing from a collector gives me a really different approach to understanding what the artist is doing in their art. And so I'm really looking forward to Melinda talking about her experiences working with Gio putting together this exhibition and the response that the um, Art Institute's audience has had to this really exciting artwork. If you have questions for Melinda as we go through this presentation, please put them into the Q&A box. Um, I try to monitor the chat, but I don't always see questions if it's there. If you put it in the Q&A, I definitely will see it. So Melinda, Please tell us about Gio Swaby, Fresh Up. 
Thank you, Martha, for the introduction and um, for the invitation to come and speak. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to share my screen and show you my um, PowerPoint. So one second here. And... How are we doing there? Are you seeing a uh, full slides? Yes. Okay. Great. I don't seem to be at the beginning, so I'm going to go back. Sorry. There we are. All right. Um, so thank you again, Martha, for the invitation. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to this group. Um, I'm really honored and delighted to share this exhibition project with you. I will say that working with Gio Swaby has been such a privilege. And in addition to her obvious talents as an artist, she has been the most generous of collaborators. So Gio Swaby, fresh up, was co-organized by the Museum of Fine Arts, St. Petersburg, Florida, and the Art Institute. It's here in Chicago until July 3rd, and it will be traveling to the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, where it opens in um, on August 12th. Who is Gio Swaby? Um, for those of you who don't know or don't know a lot about her, um, she is a Bahamian-born multidisciplinary artist now living in Toronto. She graduated from the Ontario College of Art and Design just a year ago. Um, Gia was taught to sew by her mother. Um, she worked alongside her mother as a child. Her mother was a seamstress. Gio always wanted to be an artist. She knew this from a very young age, um, but she didn't know what her practice would look like and what it would, where it would take her and what medium that she would, or mediums, media she would prioritize until about eight or 10 years ago. The use of fabric and stitching in her work is one that um, she specifically um, practices to honor her mother as well as her grandmother and her aunts who raised her. Fabrics are a way for her to make the work accessible, especially to people who aren't regular museum and gallery goers and who might feel intimidated and left out of the art world conversation. So Gio Swaby's portraits are in her own words, love letters to black women. She has described her work as a form of res a restorative form of resistance intended to counter stereotypical representations of blackness. And at the same time, her portraits are joyful, highlighting the sitter's use of fashion to define and to express themselves. The title, Fresh Up, is a Bahamian compliment that is used to describe someone's style. Uh, in Geo's words, it, quote, speaks to the tone of confidence and power that I want to create in these works, end quote. This came directly from Geo, as I said, during conversations with the curatorial team, um, my colleague Catherine Pill at the MFA St. Pete and myself, and it was universally and immediately met with enthusiasm by our publishers at Rizzoli, uh, by the MFA team, and by the Art Institute team. Even people who didn't know what the term fresh up meant were immediately captivated by its, um, well, dare I say, freshness, um, its kind of youthful connotation and its positive connotation. Gio has said that she wants to make the type of art that she wants to see herself on the gallery walls. In addition to Gio's use of fashion in her own work, um, she really sees fashion as a form of self-expression and a place for choices that determine how one represents oneself to the world. Um, as part of this, she has explored um, an actual fashion collaboration with the design duo Bruce Glenn, who are two brothers, actually um, twins, um, who are fashion designers working in LA. And I show you a couple of the um, a couple a selection of the products that they have um, that they've created. These are available on the Bruce Glenn website. Um, we have a small selection of uh, scarves and T-shirts in our shop here, and I believe that the Peabody Essex Museum is going to be prioritized this as well. 
In terms of Gio's materials and her influences, obviously I've talked about um, her use of fabric as a way to, um, to honor her mother and to uh, make the work accessible. One fabric in particular is a, a kind of nostalgic piece of type of fabric for her. I'm showing you two images here of um, Androsia batik fabrics. These were fabrics that were, um, the Androsia company was founded on the island of Andros, which is the largest of the 700 Bahamian islands. Um, it was founded by an immigrant named Rosie Birch just a few years before the Bahamas declared independence from the UK in 1973. Gio remembers her mother and her aunts wearing these fabrics for special occasions when she was a child. And this really became a kind of national of uh, the fabric of the Bahamas. So uh, we have a couple of fashion shoots from the 1970s here. And you can see both um, the batik patterns. Um, these are actually vintage photographs from uh, Rosie Birch, the founder herself. Um, but you can also see that it was definitely um, a um, an all gender kind of look as well. So um, they're uh, unisex fabrics and um, and fashions. In general, Geo's fabric choices tend towards simple printed cottons, and she's drawn to patterns that reflect both her heritage and the personality of any particular sitter. Let's see. There we go. Um, in terms of, whoops, okay. In terms of fabrics, um, sorry, in terms of artists who influence her, um, I will say that during the writing process of the catalog that we published last, last year, Gia was very generous and very frank when speaking about other artists who've influenced her. And a common theme in these conversations emerged. I'm showing you on the left-hand side, a work by Billy Zangewa, who is a Malawian uh, South African artist who also grounds her work in the use of fabric as a medium that is associated with domesticity, with women's lives, and with women's roles that require both strength and tenderness. And here you see, um, this is actually a portrait, a self-portrait of Billy taking her young son to school. These are stitched in a silk applique. Um, and then of course, the great Visa Butler, Bisa, this is the Safety Patrol, which is in the Art Institute collection. Bisa's powerful quilted depictions of families and children and her insistence that her audience understands and appreciates the fact that she is working with fabric and making quilts has really been a real gift to the quilting and fiber community. Um, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that, but as well as, as, well as to the black community, and to the museum community um, where Bisa's work and um, her contemporaries are really helping the museum community to break down some of those media hierarchy. So Geo works in series form um, and Fresh Up includes seven series spanning from 2017 to 2021. These series are defined by themes and also by compositional structure. Um, I list them here and we will see examples of all of them um, in, the, uh, in the coming slides. So I'm going to move through the images um, in the order in which you would encounter them in the physical space. And I will just say here that so many people contributed to this project and to making the work behind the scenes invisible to the uh, to the viewer. So here is the gallery entrance in the textile galleries at the Art Institute. In the entrance gallery, we're introduced to the artist's work through a six piece series of self portraits called Another Side to Me, Second Chapter. Self-portraits were the root of Swaby's practice, so I felt it was fitting to introduce her work via the self-portrait. 
when we were working on installing, um, we put paper maquettes up to uh, try to figure out how to install on the angled walls here and how to fit how to fit all six works in the series. I didn't want to cut one out. Um, during that process, um, and Geo happened to be here during that process, um, we were looking at the hanging height. And because the works are so direct, her gaze is so direct to the viewer, we really wanted to hang a bit lower. So we actually dropped these maquettes about five inches lower than the sort of standard 60 inches from center height. And um, so most of these works really are at, uh, at a kind of eye level. This is the work that greets the viewer um, most directly. Uh, this is Another Side to Me, Chapter 5. Her very direct gaze reflects the influence and her admiration of artists like Emma Amos and Amy Sherald, um, some of the really the top uh, Black American women working in portraiture. This is Another Side to Me, second chapter three. And you'll see two, in two of these six works, it's a very tight exploration of variations on a theme. There are two colors for the coats. There are several different types of outfits, but the poses vary just, just very slightly. And um, it really is, um, it's really a fascinating way to draw in the visitor. And we've been getting incredible responses to this and the rest of the galleries. Uh, in this slide, I'm showing you again another side to me, second chapter five, with a detail of her very direct gaze. Here you can start to understand um, that she is using a combination of machine stitching and applique. So she's using a free motion quilting machine really as a kind of drawing tool here. Um, she uses the machine she uses the type of machine where she's actually moving the fabric and the arm is stationary rather than the other way around. So uh, we move into the next section of the exhibition. Um, this is a space that we call the family room. This section features pictures of her two series of full length portraits, Love Letter and Pretty Pretty. I want to note that throughout the exhibition, the texts are primarily in Swaby's own words. She wrote the series introductions for the catalog. She feels that her work is complemented um, or even completed by text, and this aspect is very important to her. So we, we worked very closely with her on all of the texts for the show, um, even where we didn't use her direct quotes. In terms of preparing for these works, um, she has called the finished work a, uh, a kind of residue of the process. And the process involves her spending time with a sitter and taking a series of photographs and then working from that to, um, to create the stitched portraits. Um, she often, she invites the sitters to wear whatever they would like, to wear something that makes them feel the most beautiful, perhaps not the most formal, but a combination of beauty and comfort is really what she encourages her sitters to go for when they are choosing, um, choosing the clothes. So again, Geo really considers sewing as a kind of act of love, um, honoring her mother. This is the love letter series of um, three of her sisters. Um, so in the family room, we have the sisters in love letter and in the pretty, pretty series. And this is probably the series that is most closely aligned to traditional quilting. Um, I'll show you a detail in the next slide. So in this series, she's chosen a very dark background with gold on it. And then she is doing a series of layers of applique. So while it is not 
quilted in the sense that there is a batting layer. It is, um, it is very much an applique. And again, she is using the same stitching technique where she's using the, um, the free motion quilting machine. These happen to be um, everyone's favorite boots. So we talk a lot about the shoes and the exhibition and, and the installation and everyone, uh, everyone on staff has a, has a favorite. So here are the sisters from the Pretty Pretty series. This is a, a closer view. Um, and it's showing you the sisters. You'll see that each sister does have a different aspect of her outfit, which is highlighted with the applique. This is her sister, Geronda. And I want you to notice in the detail on the right that her nails are actually fabric applique. She has, um, Geo has really chosen to highlight through the uh, technique of applique, a feature that she feels really speaks to the character of the sitter who she's depicting. So in this case, again, the mid her middle sister, Geronda, has perfect nails. Um, and Geo has often joked that if the family was marooned on a desert island for months and months, Geronda would still manage to have perfect nails. So it is a feature that she associates with her sister very strongly. Here is another gallery view. We're looking from the so-called family room to the new growth series. For this installation, we chose this really lovely shade of blue with a hint of lavender. Um, it's interesting. It's a very kind of changeable shade that looks different on every surface, um, but works very well with both the canvas background and the black and gold background um, of the Love Letter series. I will say that when Geo first saw our galleries, we had our um, Morrison Company exhibition up and it was, uh, they were indigo walls and Morris wallpaper. So it was quite, um, it was a very Morris-like um, installation. And I said, you know, rest assured, we can paint the gallery walls white for you. Assuming that as a contemporary artist, she would prefer a kind of white cube display. And she immediately said, do they have to be white? said so absolutely not. So um, it was, it's been, again, that's another instance of how closely we were able to work with her and really to get her feedback on this. Um, every one of these details, the color, the graphics were all shared with her before things were finalized. So in moving into the next space, I'll introduce the New Growth series, which is a series of portraits um, and grouped portraits of uh, these uh, silhouettes, which really highlight the beauty and the diversity of Black hairstyles. Um, Gio really feels like many other people that the Black hairstyle, the variety of, of hair and the care that goes into um, some of these extremely beautiful coronas of uh, hairstyles that um, that so many women choose to do is really a connection um, both to their contemporary community, but also to communities of the past. And I share with you another one of the um, silhouettes from the New Growth uh, second chapter um, series. And this is the triptych, um, uh, sorry, two triptychs installed, um, the New Growth and New Growth Second Chapter series here. Um, she does install these both in, um, uh, in squares, in multiples, and she does also install them individually. So we did a kind of, um, a kind of uh, an installation that worked in the space and that showed a variety of the work here. Oops, sorry, jumped ahead. Um, this is an example of um, one of the smallest series. Um, there are only three of these. This is the um, Going Out Clothes series. Um, going Out Clothes is another uh, Bahamian phrase. Um, she describes it as um, basically what I would um, for my childhood describe as my Sunday best. 
Uh, so these are the clothes that when you get home from going to church on Sunday, when you get home from uh, from going out, from being at a family party, these are the clothes that you need to put away very neatly and then put on your yard clothes. Um, she has uh, used this series really to think about personal style and how personal style is a way uh, for a woman to um, to take up space to express herself in the world and also for black women in black women in particular to um, try to navigate the duality of being both invisible and highly visible in culture and uh, she thinks that this that style is a way for um, for her and for her friends and family to um, to take up space to take up the space that they deserve in the world. And here is Geo in front of um, another of the works in the Going Out Clothes series. She is a fantastic presenter. Um, we opened the show just before the Expo Chicago Contemporary Art Fair. So the show opened on April 7th and Expo was the following week. So we had, it was a real gift to be able to share the exhibition with a number of people who were in town for Expo and to share her work. And again, she was just extremely generous in giving her time to the museum and to the Expo community. You may recognize this work, My Hands Are Clean For, um, from the cover of the book. Um, this is a work that is particularly meaningful to Geo. Um, this series, My Hands Are Clean, really came from the experience that she had when she was living in Western Canada um, in Vancouver at the beginning of her undergraduate career. And um, Vancouver is a city with a very small Black population. And in coming from the Bahamas, she felt uh, she felt a bit out of place. She felt like she was being um, observed very closely. And she experienced the very common microaggression that many Black women experience of people actually coming up to touch her hair, unasked, without permission. And she said that one of the phrases that people will use, say, but they'll say, but my hands are clean, um, which of course doesn't, is not helpful at all. Um, in her talking about this series, um, this for me was the moment where I started to experience not only the joy and the positivity and the nuanced depiction of Black women, but also uh, her kind of, her core of a really beautiful steeliness and certainty about her message. I'm showing you a detail of another of the My Hands Are Clean series. This is My Hands Are Clean 3. Now in this series, she is stitching from the front of the canvas. So she has stitched on this surface of the canvas and this is the exhibited surface of the canvas. And you can see that there are multiple, she uses multiple lines to create a thicker line. She'll, she'll go over her stitching multiple times. She also uses, she keeps some of the threads loose um, to give a kind of liveliness and also to counter a sense of an expectation of perfectionism. Now, when she started to work on this series, Another Side to Me in 2020, she started to exhibit what we would call the back of the work or the wrong side of the stitched canvas. And when she first explained this to me, I realized that what she was doing is she was making a virtue of the problems that we often have with the bobbin thread. And so if we look at, here's Another Side to Me for and details of this work, you'll see that um, the bobbin thread, we've got some knots, we've got some tangles, we've got some loops, and she's really activated this in a way, she has chosen this in a way to make the line, to make the line more interesting, to give a kind of liveliness to the stitched line. So she's purposefully exhibiting these stitching inconsistencies 
as a statement about accepting imperfections. I'm gonna go back to the previous slide. And here I wanna share with you that this exhibition has given me some of the most profoundly moving moments in my career. Visitors truly do connect with this work in a way that, way that is so real and so immediate. This portrait in particular prompted one little seven-year-old to exclaim as she turned the corner, oh my goodness, that's so-and-so, and she named her older sister. These works balance both a specificity in terms of the person who's being represented and representation in a larger sense. And I will say to you that this experience of seeing visitors interact with the work to recognize the work, to recognize themselves in the work is one that has been repeated, but it has never, and it will never lose its power for me. And here is another in the series of, um, of another side to me. Um, I will take a moment at this point to say that um, Geo spent about a week with us earlier in the year to talk about some conservation uh, questions and issues. And we had a really fruitful conversation about artists' intent and how to work with these textiles that are on essentially painter's canvas, um, but that the textile itself is the work of art. Some of the works, most of the works are actually stretched, but some of the works are unstretched. And um, looking at this unstretched work in particular, she worked with our um, conservators to develop a method of a nearly invisible kind of pin mounting that helps the work look at it as it's sort of floating rather than a kind of hanging. Um, so it is a way of preserving the kind of lightness of an unstretched, unmounted work, um, but it is also still very secure and absolutely meets museum standards. And that is really thanks to the years and years of um, experience that our conservators have with these techniques. Um, here I will take you uh, virtually into the last gallery where the Love Letter and Pretty Pretty series continue. Um, just a word about the Pretty Pretty title. Um, the Love Letter title is, is self-explanatory, but the Pretty Pretty title is another, based on another Bahamian um, vernacular phrase where a word is repeated for emphasis. Um, I asked Geo about this when we started to work on the book, and she said that um, it is, as I said, a word is repeated for emphasis, and she explained it to me in a way, um, she said, if you, you know, if the, uh, the air conditioning is nice and cold on a hot day, one would say, ooh, that's really AC, AC. So pretty, pretty is a, a very pretty person, um, inside and out. So uh, the last gallery is really an opportunity to enjoy and appreciate variations on the theme in the Pretty Pretty and the Love Letter uh, series and Swaby's ability to, again, express both individuality and representation. The last work um, in the exhibition is a work called Gallivantin, which is a triptych. Um, Swaby has, uh, has depicted a number of people multiple times. These are very good friends of hers um, and family members. And I'm showing you a trio of portraits here who are, uh, again, very good friends of Geo's. Um, so uh, Pretty Pretty Eight and Pretty Pretty Nine. Pretty Pretty Nine is um, the work that belongs to our collection and Love Letter One in the center. And then we move on to the Gallivantin triptych. And those three women are depicted again in this triptych. Um, they are close friends. They are close friends of Geo's. Uh, this work really speaks to uh, connection and reconnecting to dear friends. Um, this was made during the pandemic. It was a commission um, by the American Embassy in the Bahamas. And so she made it also as a kind of symbol of the fact that they had been apart for a long time 
they are connected virtually in the triptych and that they would be connected again in person. Um, I had the opportunity to meet two of the sitters at, um, at the opening at the MFA St. Pete. And it was really beautiful to see how, um, how these women connect and they are all artists and they are, they're just extremely close. Uh, I could resist sharing with you the Fresh Up team um, and talk a little bit more about the importance of collaboration. So here we are in the conservation lab with Geo in the center in um, a fantastic Bruce Glenn outfit. Uh, and we're looking at uh, the work um, that is in the Art Institute collection, Pretty Pretty Nine. Uh, here you have Pretty Pretty Nine again, and um, you have the reverse of the work, and you can see how Geo does a little applique uh, with a kind of signature, um, which is really sweet, which I didn't even notice until we'd had the work for quite a while. Um, in terms of this particular work, I'll just share why um, I chose to acquire this work for the Art Institute. In the Pretty Pretty series, all of the works are essentially life size. Um, and they are so they're all about 84 inches tall. And in this work, with the sitter sort of crouching, I felt immediately ad admiration, and I'd only seen it in images, I felt this immediate admiration for the fact that she had left the space of the canvas blank above. So this woman can stand up at any moment. Um, and I feel that very much with the Pretty Pretty series, that they are a very quick snapshot in time and that each woman has the freedom to move. Um, this woman also is um, a friend of Gio's named Kia, and she um, described Kia as someone who she has admired for a very long time for the fact that she balances both her strength and her softness. Um, and so she has chosen an outfit, she and Kia would have chosen an outfit that, um, that really expresses this. So Kia usually wears her hair clo a very close cropped, but she's also wearing this very soft flowing gown. Here is Gio and uh, conservator Isaac Falcio, um, and they're talking about, again, this was during the week in uh, late January, early February that she spent with us on site, talking about stretching the works. Um, it's been uh, really an education for us as a textile department and textile conservators to work so closely with an artist and talk about exactly what her needs are. How tightly does she want that to be stretched? it's tighter than a textile conservator would be more comfortable with. But we were able to talk to her about her intent and to make the, um, the stretching work in a way that achieves her goals and in a way that um, we know is, um, is secure and safe for the future. And here is Gio again, looking, um, looking through the microscope with um, Isaac and our colleague, Megan. Uh, they really had a kind of intensive talking about different types of materials, particularly in the, um, the applique work in the Love Letter series and the Galavantin series. Um, Gio's working with several layers of fabric um, and she's using different types of, um, different types of material to achieve this layered effect. And she was learning about the longevity of these types of um, these types of materials and how they might interact together, which was something that she hadn't considered and something that we were all learning about as well. So it was an extremely fruitful experience, and we will always be grateful for the time that she gave us and the time that we were able to give to her. And Lastly, um, I'll just show you again, this is um, an example of Geo's generosity to the, uh, to the staff and the community, the staff of the Art Institute and the community here in Chicago. This is Geo Swaby in conversation with one of our colleagues, um, Ian DeMont Martin, who is the dire director of equity and inclusion 
here in the museum. Uh, we had an all staff conversation with Gio and Ian um, where they spent an hour just talking to the staff about her intent, about her practice, about her journey and um, taking questions from the staff. Um, we did a public event as well, which happened uh, the following day. And she also, this was extremely special. Um, she was asked by our head of security if she would come to one of the morning security roll calls. Our security officers are uh, contractors, so they are not considered um, full-time AIC staff. So they have separate meetings and they wouldn't have been, been invited to this staff conversation. So, um, and he made the point in his request to GEO that 90% of the um, security staff are people of color. So she went to the security staff roll call and um, talked to them again about her practice, answered their questions. And throughout the exhibition, whenever I see the security staff, um, they, thank me, um, it wasn't my idea, but they thank me for making that possible and um, pass their thanks along to GEO. So it has just been a very meaningful um, community experience here, which is so much, it's absolutely in line with GEO's intent, with GEO's work and our intent here in the museum to, uh, to broaden our audiences, to make everyone feel comfortable in the museum and to prioritize the work of women and the work of women and color, women of color in our collection. So again, it's it's a privilege and an honor and a joy to to share this with you. So, um, oh yes, and Gio Swaby is right now um, installing her show at the Claire Oliver Gallery, which will open on Friday and run through the 15th of July. So those of you in the New York area will have easy access to a new work by Geo Swaby. And now I will say thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Um, that was wonderful. Uh, we have a, a number of different questions for you. Um, but first, I wanted to tell everybody that um, there is a gorgeous catalog available of the exhibition with an essay by Melinda. Um, but it really shows you um, all the details, uh, gives you an interview with Geo, gives you um, a number of different people's uh, thoughts about her work. Um, and so that catalog is available. And Melinda, tell us where they can get it. Well, you can get it here at the Art Institute. Um, it is available on all of the usual um, book sites. Um, I My personal favorite is bookstore.org. No, bookshop.org. Yes, bookshop.org. Um, and uh, it's available. It will also be available um, if you prefer to purchase in person at the Peabody Essex shop. It should be available at um, most Rizzoli or all Rizzoli outlet outlets as well. Yeah, but uh, if you, like me, um, love books, this is one to add to your collection. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you a couple of the questions that came up in the chat and the Q&A. Um, the first one um, has to do with uh, your institution and the choice of where to exhibit fiber. So Bisa mm -hmm. Butler's exhibition was up on the main floor. Um, and this one is back down in uh, the textiles gallery. And somebody said, why there instead of in contemporary art? Right. Um, this is, I will try to give you a concise and shorter answer because we could sure. spend 45 minutes talking <laughs> about that. Um, so the Visa Butler show originated in at the Katona Museum of Art with a former colleague of mine at the Metropolitan Museum of Art who had then gone to Katona. She contacted me, said, can we borrow the safety patrol? I said, no, we've <laughs> just acquired it. I would rather show it here first. And then I thought, Let's take that show. I have the opportunity, the privilege, and the responsibility of programming the textile galleries. 
it was a very quick turnaround. And so the only way we could fit it into the Art Institute programming was to plan it for the textile galleries. Then COVID hit. So the galleries, what, where Visa Butler was installed was the old master's galleries, the Baroque galleries. That had been deinstalled as a permanent installation and made into a temporary exhibition space for another exhibition. And um, James Rondeau, our director, thought, well, this is set up for a temporary exhibition. Let's put the Visa Butler show there. This is what we need to do right now at this moment of COVID, just post the murder of George Floyd. Um, this, is, this is the message we want and need to send to our community, mm -hmm. to the local community um, in particular. So we were, we were able to do that. Um, lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> so, um, when Geo's work was introduced to me by Claire Oliver, um, I was actually asked to participate in the um, in writing the catalog. And um, this kind of snowballed and the show was already being organized by the MFA St. Pete and we decided to partner with them. I will say again, the, the, the tour was already determined. So um, my gallery has, I have more flexibility in my gallery. So we were able to schedule it for this gallery. Mm -hmm. um, I will also say that um, my, um, my colleagues in um, modern and contemporary are, because we have a text, a, 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 an encyclopedic textile department, um, most textile based works do come here. Now, I don't want to claim Geo, and I've said this to her, and I've said this in other forums. I don't want to claim her for textiles only. She is very much a multidisciplinary artist. Her work is very much based on a broad practice, but she is very comfortable with being in the textile galleries, and she is comfortable making that part of the message. Um, so it is really a combination of timing and institutional priorities. I couldn't get a spot in in the quick turnaround from deciding to do this show in 2021 to installing it in 23. There were no other spots available. It was only my gallery that's flexible where we could install the show. Um, I do um, in person. We are all very happy with the intimate feeling of the show here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it obviously um, is an important part of what she says about her work is that the connections with women and with domesticity are important to her. And so um, it, may, it, it certainly makes sense to have it in that gallery. It looks beautiful. I wish I could just hop over to Chicago to see in person. <laughs> Um, the other questions that we got were um, some questions, and you may or may not know the answers. Um, how does Geo decide which series, which parts of the portrait to do as embroidery uh, with her sewing machine, and which does, how does she decide which parts then are going to be fabric? So um, with the different series, um, for those of you who are new to the work and are seeing a variety of works for the first time, it, it may be a little bit difficult to, to sort of think back, but if we, if we think back to the first series that I showed, um, Another Side to Me, Second Chapter, the Six Self-Portraits, yeah. the proportion of um, applique to, um, to stitching is quite different than what you see in the Pretty Pretty series. Um, mm -hmm. Also the full length portrait versus the half length portrait and okay. the bust length portrait. So, you know, how does she decide? I can't tell you exactly how she decides on those proportions, but the um, the free motion stitching is very much a part of, um, in the stitched works on canvas where you see the canvas is, is very much a part of her expressing the line, the gesture, mm -hmm. facial features. Um, so those, I will say that those features in particular, the hair, face, hands are um, to date always 
uh, stitched on canvas, um, except in the silhouetted series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and they're very different. They have a different mm -hmm. um, feeling vibe to them. Right. Uh, one of the questions that I had was that um, all of the work that I've seen so far is depicting young women. So while um, a lot of it is her friends and sisters, um, there doesn't seem to be any work that is uh, about her mother, for instance, or mm. her aunts. And, mm. um, and I was wondering if she said anything about this uh, preference for young women. So she is still a very young artist mm -hmm. and um, her practice is very much evolving before our eyes. She started with self-portraits because that's who she could get to sit for. <laughs> Um, and she Definitely. moved on to friends. Um, and you will notice that the titles don't identify the sitters. At this yeah. point, she is just starting to identify the sitters. And it's been a conversation between her and the sitters and her also trying to balance um, privacy and um, you know her professional life and her private life, the privacy of the people she's depicting um and also not identifying the sitters is kind of a way to open up the possibilities to viewers so she has started with her circle of friends and her family she is the youngest of four so the older sister the oldest sister is 11 years older um so she's in her uh in her mid 40s mm -hmm. um geo's mother her grandmother and her aunts have all sadly passed away. So um, she is not able to work in the way that she normally works where it's a conversation and the resulting portrait is not just taken from a picture. Mm -hmm. um, it is part of a conversation about a pose, about choices. Um, so she can't work in that way with her relatives who have passed. Right. Um, she is um yes her circle of friends is you know is younger her sisters are her sisters are younger yeah. yeah um yes and this is you know this is where she is right now um you know i i actually will i will say that someone asked me at another event um you know what is she going to do next mm -hmm. in a way that implied to me that she thought the work was a bit limited and I'd like to push back against that and just say, you know, would we ask that of Kehindu Wiley? What are you going to do next? Are you going to keep painting Black people against floral backgrounds? I don't think anybody's ever asked him that. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, I would like to push back against the idea that maybe this exploring a series in depth, exploring other sides, exploring different ways of depicting different people um, is a practice that is worth that is worth pursuing. And where she goes, Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know that yeah. she knows. Mm -hmm. um, but I I fear, and this is not, you know, I, this is not where your your viewer or listener was coming from, but I do fear that there is still very much a material hierarchy. And that the question that I had, which I'm trying to expand upon just to expand the conversation, was based on a subtle lack of appreciation for the medium. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're successful in fiber, why wouldn't you do painting? Yeah. Right. Or uh, why, you know, why, why is a series of painting not questioned when a series of fiber mm -hmm. works that are variations on a theme is questioned. Yeah, I, I think, you know, my question is coming from um, a desire to see what she would make of someone of my age mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what, what she would pick up on. Um, what comes through in the catalog is um, her working process where she's working with a sitter taking a variety of photos of them doing different things, talking with the sitter about which kind of pose really expresses them. And then often 
the fabrics that she's using are personal to the sitter. So that um, sometimes they're her own, you know, worn out clothes or whatever, but often they are special to the sitter and she's letting Gio incorporate them into her work. Um, my last question is one that you talked a little bit about, but I'm fascinated by, which is um, the whole question of how do you balance uh, stretching versus sagging? Yeah. Um, that was, you know, trying to find that balance um, really was, as I said, the result of, you know, week long intensive of working with her, working with the conservators and trying to understand um, what she hoped to achieve. She doesn't want to lose with the stretched works. You know, she doesn't want to lose the sense that it is fabric and that the fabric that is stretched coming around the stretcher is that is all still part of the work and our conservators are extremely sensitive to that um and really trying to think about the 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 edges everything is is part of the entire the whole work so these don't go into frames but they are stretched mm -hmm. um so that is um the degree to which their stress just is is very subtle they're probably not as tight as a painting would be where the canvas is permeated with a pigment, with a paint, is supported by a pigment or a paint. Um, if it's too, too tight, it would start to look really, really flat. Um, so they have a little bit of what we would call kind of bounce to them. Mm -hmm. However, we don't want to have visual on the ones that are stretched, we don't want to have visual wrinkles or ripples sure so um but it's it's a very subtle difference and um the opportunity to explore that with her and speak about that with her um was really was really a gift mm -hmm. well thank you so much melinda um i'm going to ask you after the talk a little bit more about that pin mounting system because that sounds like something we should know about but thank you so much for taking the time today to share uh the exhibition with us and to share your insights and in working with geo swaby um it's been really wonderful to our audience sure. thank you for joining us today if you enjoy textile talks, please consider making a donation to support us. We are starting the next round of fundraising and we need another $25,000 in order to put on textile talks for the next 12 months. So please consider making a donation. And if you would like to join Studio Art Quilt Associates, remember to use that discount code TALKS, T-A-L-K-S, and join us for our upcoming virtual event, Art in Place. Thank you so much for being here. Remember to chime in next week when, quick checking my calendar, we will be having a wonderful presentation by the International Quilt Museum interviewing Basil Kincaid. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.